Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Mythgard and Middle-Earth. My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, joined, as always, Flit, who has been sitting <clears throat> next to the Great River here. He's been waiting patiently for a while. He's been here at the very beginning of the Great River area, uh, and which is where we finished up like three weeks ago, the last time I did a stream. And he's just been sitting here watching the river go by, which I have to admit is so mesmerizing I could probably lose three weeks myself just sort of staring at the water flowing by. The Great River runs really swiftly here. I can't help but notice. Um, uh, though, of course, the view is somewhat marred by the fact that, uh, you know, you can just see the far side shrouded in mist there. Uh, and I actually, I love how the the sort of outline against the sky, you can see sort of the the, the comparatively withered trees over there in southern Mirkwood, certainly uh, contrasted with the mighty Malorn under which uh, uh, Grifflet is uh, standing here. But uh, anyway, hi! So good to be back, everybody. I missed two weeks there, though for very good reasons. First, because I was away uh, for my family's vacation, which was a lot of fun. And then after that, as soon as I got home, I went off to uh, to this, the Bay Area. I got to go to Baymoot uh, and meet uh, a bunch of people out there. That was so much fun. Uh, really good to meet you. I met some people. I drove down to San Jose, actually, while I was there because Worldcon was going on. So there were a bunch of people there for Worldcon, of course, the biggest science fiction convention of the year. Um, and that was really cool. I didn't get to go to Worldcon uh, because I was already, you know, I was going to my event instead. But I did want to visit folks that I knew folks were there. So I drove down to San Jose, got to hang out with stuff on Friday, or with stuff with people on Friday evening. And then I drove back up and we had Baymoot on Saturday in Oakland. And it was so cool. Uh, so it was, uh, it was an awesome, awesome weekend, uh, and really looking forward to more regional events. We have four more events scheduled, uh, and scattered quite broadly geographically, mostly all in America here over these next, uh, over these next four or five months. Um, though I will be coming back to Europe hopefully next spring. Uh, so yeah, to just to make sure that you know about this, uh, the, the moots that we have scheduled are in Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, Kansas City, Missouri, LA, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Waco, Texas. So we've got Tex Moot, Magnolia Moot, LA Moot, and Middle Moot working backwards. Um, and uh, those are all coming up relatively soon. Uh, the soonest is uh, October 6th is the day of Middle Moot in Kansas City, and then October 27th is LA Moot in Los Angeles, and then uh, November 10th is uh, Magnolia Moot in Charlotte, North Carolina, and then January 19th is Tex Moot uh, in Waco, Texas. And you know, for those of you who have never been to one of these events, they're really fun. They're designed to be easily accessible for everybody who's within even a reasonable drive of these places. They're one-day events, they take place on a Saturday, and they are, uh, we, you know, we, we try to make them as easy to travel to as possible. They're inexpensive. It costs like at most 40 bucks or something uh, to attend the conference. You get lunch with that as well. Um, so, you know, that none of these events are we trying to make any money. Uh, actually, Signum University has a pretty firm break-even policy. Like, we have to raise enough money to cover our expenses in putting these conferences on, but that's all we're ever trying to do. It's just about creating opportunities uh, for folks to get together. Uh, so uh, anyway, we're 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 working on this, uh, and it's um, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, these events are really great. So if you get a chance to come out, I hope you'll be able to to do that. We are working on some more for the spring. Uh, we're working on at least uh, Seattle, somewhere in Europe, and New York City, and possibly Ohio. Too. Anyway, there are a couple others that we're working on there. Um, and then we're looking to add some more for the following year. So we're going to have at least eight, maybe nine uh, regional moots this year, in addition to our big annual Myth Moot Convention. And that's the big one. That's four days. Uh, it's in the Washington, D.C. area, right in, in uh, Virginia, Leesburg, Virginia, right near Dulles Airport. Um, and um, it's, uh, that's, our, that's our, our, our big, big annual event. Uh, four days, big speakers, really, really uh, awesome. That's the 
the huge Signum get together every year. Signum and Mythgard get together. Um, so anyhow, that is just to let you know about what's coming up because I just had our first one of this year and it was fantastic. So I hope you guys can join me. But anyway, Grifflet has got to get busy here. And I was seeing that we have um, lots of really awesome lore questions. So again, wait, Grifflet, hang on. You're supposed to talk to this nice androgynous elf up here. Is it a yeah, elf lady? Okay, couldn't see you from behind there. All right, here we go. Might you spare a moment of your time? I, I absolutely can spare a moment. Um, you're glad that I was passing through this part of the wood. I forgot to put my earphones on here. Um, uh, while the Melern fade here, Thin Glad is still part of Lorien. Huh. So that the Melern are fading. How long have they been fading? I wonder. Can we can we diagnose that? Is that a is that a problem we should be aware of? Is it supposed to be correlated with the... What is that correlated with? Why would the Malorn be failing? Why would they used to be here but not here anymore? Is it part of the, you know, the curse of Southern Mirkwood? Is it part of the, you know, the Necromancer's curse that's crossing the river and encroaching on Southern Lorien? Or is it just because the elves are fading and the power of Galadriel is slowly diminishing over time? Is that what we're, what we're looking at here? Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, okay, I don't know, I'm trying to understand that there, I don't think there are any other references to that, I don't think people talk about the fact that the Malorans are, and that they are, look at that, that's an awfully withered Malorn, that's super sad, Noriel, uh, I wish we could talk about that more, but anyway, okay, um, you've heard and seen strange signs of trespassing, really, um, investigate and see what there is to see. Okay. All right, sure. Yeah, I can do that. I have a suspicion. I saw a vision. I had a dream, Noriel. Uh, I had a dream uh, today that some creepy little dude uh, whom I may or may not have seen before in the Troll Shaws was uh, sneaking around here. Okay. Looking at empty fisherman's net. And yeah, I see some further discussion of this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Columbus, Ohio is the leading candidate if we do uh, an Ohio moot, indeed. Uh, that is the that is definitely where it is likely to happen. Um, yeah, London moot in uh, uh, was in this past April was was really great. Um, I'm not 100% sure if we're going to do... Uh, London again. One of the downsides of London is that it's really expensive. Um, so uh, that it was hard. It was hard to break even with a London moot because of the costs of uh, just getting space and everything's kind of expensive in London, um, uh, which of course won't surprise anybody <laughs> who uh, uh, lives in London or has spent any time in London. Um, but um, anyway, so th that's one of the limitations. Also, there are some other possibilities. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what's kind of going to be best as far as uh, uh, planning for um, our Europe mood. But one way or another, I think we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely make it over there. Okay, I'm just going to swim. Griffith's going to swim upstream because he can't find... There must be another fishing net here, but he's not seeing it, so he's going to explore here the other way. Um, yeah, Ethelod suggests Denmark. That is a strong candidate, I will admit. Uh, uh, Copenhagen is, is definitely uh, on the short list, actually, uh, of places where we could go. Um, Oxford would be cool. Uh, it would definitely be cool. Um, uh one slight sort of reservation I have about Oxford is that it's to do a moot in Oxford is kind of uh, it's not exactly trespassing on Tolkien society territory, but like their oxen moot is like their classic event every year. And if we do like an oxen moot exactly, which we couldn't call that, of course, because that's their event name. Um, OK, what the heck am I looking for? <laughs> Why am I not finding it? Hello, fishing nets. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm just, you know, not 100% sure. Oh, there it is, upstream there. Okay. Um, not 100% sure. Uh, it would make me a little bit uncomfortable. I certainly don't. You know, we're friends and partners with the Tolkien Society, and I certainly wouldn't want them to think that we're just like, you know, 
trying to poach their idea or something like that. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. All right. Found some nets, and they were empty, Noriel. Those fishing nets had no fish in them. What can I do for you? There have never been fishing nets. Huh. Okay, I thought this was a golem issue, and that you were gonna—you were upset about the fact that there were no fish in the nets. But that's not—that's not the problem, I guess. Okay, so we're looking for other signs of issues. Okay, hang on. I guess we're going—we're going this way, looking for signs of something. Trespassers. Oh, hang on. A horseshoe. Suspicious. A shoe thrown from a horse. Well, he threw it pretty far if it went all the way up against the base of that tree up there. Okay. Oh, no, that's it. Just a horseshoe. Okay. All right, Norio. I found a horseshoe. That is apparently what you were looking for. Okay. How can I be of service? Yeah. One of the horses of Stangard, a Rohirrim settlement. Great! Yes, they are a little skittish about elves, aren't they? Um, oh, but hang on, we've got hats. All right. Uh, helms here. Silver tokens of the Anduin. Are any of these very attractive helmets? Oh, well, I'm wearing a hoodie, so I won't be able to see the helmet anyway, so there's no sense uh, getting one cosmetically. Might as well get some more silver tokens in case... Mind my good. words, okay. traveler. Okay, let's see. So what do we do now? Uh, the Rohirrim have always believed our kind are evil. Yeah, and that Lothlorien is haunted. Yeah, that's so true. Um, we feel that this is not entirely a bad belief. Okay. All right. I guess that's fair. I had the idea that if you could crouch hidden near their camp and make strange noises, <laughs> we'll frighten them away. Okay, so you're wanting to get rid of them, but you're not wanting to attack them. All right, I guess. Stay a moment. Let's see. They once stayed clear, they must be truly desperate. What, for fish? Uh, are they drawn here by a mastering desire for fish? Is that the... Is that it? Okay. Uh, the Dwimmerdeen. I love that name so much. Um, we would rather remain hidden. Sure. Oh, wait, what am I meant to do? Destroy their fishing nets. Oh, well, that's a little vandalism. I mean, it's better than attacking them, I admit. But maybe we could just chat, you know? Stay like, you ever think about just go up and talking to them and being like, hey, can we? I mean, I get it. They'd probably freak out if they saw you. I understand. But I'm a hobbit, right? I could just, why don't I just? Okay. There's a weed, a terrible smelling weed Crush reek weeds. Oh, I like reek weeds. All right, so just, you want me to make a stink. Literally make a stink. Okay. All right, we can do that. Um, okay, so... Uh, hey, everybody. Okay, wait. Boopy, what does what mean? Exactly. That's what you're asking about. Um... Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm looking for weeds. I'm looking for uh, nets, fishing nets. There were empty fishing nets around here, but they're gone, apparently. Having just checked those, I've confirmed that they're empty, so I guess those are not the ones that we're looking to. Uh, uh, that is not the one that we are looking to sabotage, apparently. Whew! Man, the Anduin is crazy down here. Okay. All right, we got some reek weed here. Okay. All right. Um, let me get to some of my awesome lore questions, which I have all stored up here. <clears throat> okay. Um... Uh, let's say... Oh, goodness, so many things. Hey, Ethelod. Okay, I'll start off with one of yours, Ethelod. Um, Ethelod says, Do you think Lake Town... Uh, uh, Lake Town having holidays seems to be semi-almost a republic? Uh, do I think Lake Town is a republic? And what was Tolkien's view on republicanism? Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, wow, you have like five questions all lumped together into one here. Um, uh, okay. Let me start. St whoa. What, what, what happened to me? Why am I? Oh, it's, am I feeling sick because of the weeds? Is that what's happening? Is this me, like, is this nauseation screen here? I totally didn't even notice that. I'm stoned? I guess so. Yikes. Oh, no, that's a bear. That's not a weed. That's a bear. Okay. Uh, I got this then. Uh, right. And your poor Grifflet staggering around. Uh, uh, collecting weeds. So, okay. All right. Um, uh, is Lake Town a republic? Well, uh, no. No, I don't think that it is a republic. It sounds like a republic. Um, what are the things that make Lake Town sound like a republic? Uh, the number one thing is the place where the master of Lake Town, when he is rebutting the calls for, not rebutting exactly, but when he is uh, uh, resisting the calls uh, to make Bard the king, right? Uh, he is, um, he says that Lake Town has always chosen its leaders from among the wise and prudent, which makes it sound like they have elected officials. And he certainly does appear to be uh, interested in public opinion Right, uh, so you know, in his like declaring holidays because everyone else is into it, even though he doesn't believe it. Um, oh, okay, so just a little delayed destruction of the nets going on there. Um, so anyway, uh, that's those are my basic understanding of the the reasons that that people think about Lake Town as a republic. I don't think Lake Town is a republic. Um, I think that. Lake Town is an oligarchy. Um, remember, when he talks about Lake Town choosing its leaders from among the wise and prudent, um, he does not... He is obviously himself some kind of merchant figure, right? Uh, he is all very interested... You know, he's mostly interested in, in tolls and, um, uh, and all that kind of thing, right? Um, he's not... Um, his interests are heavily mercantile. Um, and I don't think the, again, his reference to Lake Town choosing its leaders does not necessarily, not necessarily mind, it could suggest elected leaders, um, but it does not seem to me necessarily to imply elected leaders. Um, I think that when he speaks collectively of Lake Town, like Lake Town has chosen its, he's justifying his own choice. Um, it sounds to me more like the kind of uh, the kind of town that is governed by a merchant guild, uh, and the merchant guild chooses, uh, you know, on behalf of the town, uh, one from among its number to be the master of Lake Town. Uh, the the title master does not, to me, suggest elections. Um, if they had a mayor, that would suggest that more, but they don't have a mayor. They have a master. Um, so, yeah, I, I tend not to think that... Um, okay, Bear, would you just calm down? I'm just collecting reekweed. You really don't want a piece of me right now. I mean, if you were to, like, try to take a big old bite of grifflet right now, it would you would regret it, believe you me. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, are we getting below the space? No, I don't think so. Um, so, so I don't think that Lake Town is a republic at all. I don't think they elect their officials. Oh, hey, look, it's their, it's the camp. Excellent. How much more of this reekweed do I need? Oh, man, I'm still missing a fishing net. Oh, there's one. Okay, good, right next to the camp. Um, so yeah, so I don't think that they are a republic at all. Um, I think that the mayor is trying to solidify his own power. He's not running for re-election. He's not, you know, uh, I, I don't think he's running for re-election. <laughs> Look at me keeping a little profile here. Hey there, Rohiric dude sitting in boat right next to me. 
Yeah, excuse me, guys. I'm gonna, I gotta go hide myself here. Oh, there's a more ringweed over here. Um, so, uh, uh, so yeah, they, they are, they are, it's, it's strange. The politics of Lake Town are not obvious, um, but, um, uh, we do, the Shire has, has elected officials. I don't think that, um, uh, many of the other, that, that Lake Town certainly has them. Um, other, let me see if I can get to some of your other Lake Town related questions there, Ethelod. Um, oh, what, what was Tolkien's view on republicanism again? Well, I, I, I don't think that, uh, it's really an example of it. He's obviously, he, Tolkien, is obviously skeptical of it. What's going on here? That's it? Did I? I told that this is a good place to hide. This might be a better place to hide. Let's see if I can whistle from here. No. Okay, good places to hide, but not good places from which to be heard, I guess. Is this a good place to hide right in front of him? Hmm. Here's a dude over here. Let me hide behind his tent. How about this? Is this a good place to hide? He can't see me here. Hi! Oh, you're looking right at me. Hang on. Uh, can I hide over here? Excuse me. You don't notice me. No. No, those aren't good places to hide, apparently. That's a good place to hide, but you didn't hear me. No. No idea where to hide. How about these bushes? Is this a good place? This looks like a good place to hide. No? This is not a good place. Maybe I stink too badly. Maybe that's the problem. All right, hang on. I, I must... Oh, there's a guy there. Was he always there? And he couldn't hear me from over here? No. no okay. All right. Oh, wait, is it because I'm whistling? Oh, I still have the reekweed selected, so I'm whistling at the reekweed. I, I got it. I got you. Okay. If I just whistle generally. No? No. No. Okay. I have to select the dude? Okay. I'll whistle to him. Okay. All right. Whew. All right. We've got, we've got this sorted out. I'm going to start whistling to the bear. Uh, okay. I have to wait a few minutes. Okay. I have to mumble. These woods just aren't right. Okay. All right. I'm creeping out the fisherman. Okay. All right. I'm waiting. And now I'm ro going to roar. <laughs> Could it be the witch of the golden wood? Yeah, that's what she does. She whistles and mumbles in the bushes. If you've ever met Goadriel, you'll know she's famous for this. And then she claps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That, that was fun. Okay. Glad I sorted that out. And I got to go back and hand this stinky stuff in already. Okay. Um, so, sorry. Ethel had other Lake Town related questions. What was the next one that I was looking at? It was. Um, oh, yeah. So, what is the Dale Lander's complexion? Um, hard to say exactly. I mean, they do seem to, you know, who would they associate with Brelanders or the runic people? Uh, on the, 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 the people of Rune, you mean? The Easterlings? Well, the, um, the men of Dale are clearly related to uh, the men of Rovanian. Um, uh, you know, those, remember the, uh, the, like the ancestors of the Rohirrim. Uh, really, I mean, so there, <clears throat> there's a, there would be distant connections uh, between the men of Dale uh, and the Rohirrim. Um, where am I? No, did I miss it? Oh, I have to go to Thinglad? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for that elf chick up here, but no. I guess I have to go to Thinglad for all of these. I mean, I'm in Thinglad. I mean, what is it? Haldrith. With the, you know, the town. Okay, fine. 
Uh, all right. We'll find it then. Okay. Oh, she. So it is the same lady, but uh, she went to them. Okay. She went to them. Fine. We'll put. Ooh. Uh oh. An art camp. That's never good. So where am I? Where am I going? Okay. There is a road over here. Ooh, boy. A little crowded through here. Okay. Oh, look at this. I've wandered back up into Wathlorian. Boy, there is a rather remarkable difference, isn't there? And then all of a sudden, wham! We are in the gray land down here. That's crazy. It's super green up in Lothlorien. Wow. Um, okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> so uh, Joe, Joe Go there is wondering, where am I reading his questions? Off my phone, um, where they are being filtered to me by Phil, uh, the, our, uh, our, our lore monkey here. His, his, so Phil is, he helps keep track of things because I have a really hard time looking at the chat. Am I going the right way? No, is the answer to that question. Um, I, I have a hard time, like, goodness knows, I have a hard enough time maintaining my own stream of thought when I'm just looking at one thing. So I have a hard time keeping up with the chat. So he, so just post a quest, lore question in the chat and he will make sure that it gets to me. Uh, and then that way I have them for when I, uh, uh, if I don't get to them all next time, which so what can I do happens. for you? Okay. All right. No, Stable Master, meeting you was its own reward. Okay. So. There she is. Hi, Norio. Okay. I nudged them gently. How can I be of service? You think it's better for them to find these lands haunted? Well, I, I guess. They won't disturb us for two or three more generations. <laughs> I love the elvish perspective in that. Yeah. That bought us a little bit of time. Okay. Um, How can I be of service? Yeah, I did not alert them of your presence. Okay. Oh, right. No, this was the destroy, the, the sabotage their fishing nets, which seemed a little bit petty. But what do you okay. need? Um, yeah, you could, you could, you could smell that uh, the deed was done. Okay. Whew. All right. Glad to get rid of those stinky things. Okay, and. Mind my words, traveler. Okay, we should use it on the huntsmen. There's, there's some huntsmen we also need to scare away. At Winmar in particular. Okay. All right, fine. And do you want me to sabotage his Will hunting you lend me gear? Your ear? Yeah, to destroy their traps. Oh, those are forbidden. Uh, I see. Well, okay. Uh, you know, so they're not. It's fishing is okay, but. Okay, let's see. I don't, I don't know. Both of those are frankly useful places. All right. I think I'll stick with Galtrev as my central place. Hey there, Fimloth. Why am I coming Orcs to you? Oh, Lothlorien sent me. Lothlorien sent me. Galadriel sent me. Right. Dangerous time to pass through. Yeah, I just sighted a whole bunch of orcs. Got chased around by one. Um, friends of yours passed this way, and you seek to know if they did so safely. Friends. Oh, the fellowship! Yes! Absolutely. The scouts have not reported any bands of travelers, but if your friends traveled in secret, they may have gone unnoticed. Well, they are fairly a fairly stealthy lot. Uh, okay, perhaps I'll find signs of their passage. Let's look for signs of the passage of the fellowship. That'll be fun. And hi, Kiriana, how are you? Uh, and am I good? I think I'm good. I have to whistle at people. Where am I whistling? Uh, oh, there's traps all around here, are there? And the hunters are further up north. Okay, fine. All right, we'll sort this out here. Okay. Oh, there's the traps. So let's get to the trapping business. Um, uh, but anyway, Ethelot, as for your question about the um, complexion of the Dale Landers, I would, uh, I, I, the, the Dale men, I would assume they would be fair-skinned um, since they are related to the Northmen, to the, to the, you know, the Rohirrim and the ancestors of the Rohirrim. Um, so the, the men of Rovanian are like, uh, uh, 
sort of uh, northern Germanic peoples. Uh, so I would assume they would be they would be pretty fair skinned. Um, the same would not necessarily be true of the Gondorians. Uh, I mean, of course, you saw you see in the game um, that the the developers made the choice to have the Gondorian folks be more more brown skinned. Uh, that seems to me perfectly uh, correct, perfectly appropriate, because of course Gondor is, as Tolkien tells us, about the latitude of um, of of Italy, like Venice, basically. So um, having them have uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, darker skins, um, like a, a more Mediterranean complexion is uh, uh, very much exactly in keeping with what Tolkien describes. One of the things that people have often a hard time with is that Tolkien, for all of the time that he spends describing the landscape, he spends very little time describing people, things like that, like skin tone and you know we'll get things like hair color but usually it's about hair color so if somebody's described as as fair that usually means they're blonde or if they're described as dark it doesn't mean he's not even talking about their skin he's generally talking about their hair um so uh uh anyway but but like i said no he just doesn't you know give us even Usually, even things like one-sentence descriptions of uh, of how people look, you know, people's faces and, you know, complexions and things like that. It's just not his focus at all. Okay, all right, there we go. We've got all the traps. Now I just have to find the hunter's camp, which I know it's up this way. Okay, let's get on our horse then. Um, okay. Uh, oh yeah. Schmat, schmat, schmatzio? Schmatzio! Um, that Mumok was completely stealthy. He came out of nowhere, man. Like, nobody could have spotted that Mumok. He was, like, hiding in the bushes. And then as I was walking into an apparently empty glade, he just jumped, like, leapt out at me from the bushes. Uh, uh, it was, I was completely blindsided by that Mumok. Um, yeah, could have happened to anybody, really. I mean, it really could have. Oh, hey, sorry, I probably shouldn't ride my horse into the middle of camp. I am meant to be stealthy. Excuse me, sorry, I'm going to hide behind your tents. No, no, I'm going to hide behind eh, this tent, apparently. All right, here we go, Winmar. You're the one that I'm meant to disturb uh, did that not work why didn't that work got in selected oh am I not in the good hiding spot anymore let me try again there we go. You do not frighten us. Oh, this guy is made of sterner stuff than the fisherman. We are not leaving, huh? Can I just talk? Oh, good, I'll just talk to him. Hey there, sorry about the roaring. That was embarrassing. What brings you to these lands? <laughs> Uh, we shall go, but only if you return our missing hunter. Huh. Other concern for, well, that's understandable. We'll put a posse together. We'll go out and we'll look for your friend. Okay. All right. We'll go back there and we'll talk to Noriel and we'll say we've got to go find their friend. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. More lore questions. Wow, so many lore questions. Um, Pontin Finberry. Okay, Pontin says, I've been wondering about Galadriel's hair. Is there anything special about it? Oh, man, is there? Uh... I was rereading some passages that Fanor begged for a tress of her hair, but she would not give it. 
And then thousands of years later, she gave the dwarf Gimli three hairs. Yeah, that's exactly what is special about her hair. Does her hair have special properties, like special powers? We have no idea. Uh, I mean, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. That's not why Gimli wants it. He's not planning to put it to use, right? He is going to make of it an imperishable symbol, uh, you know, a, a, like a little, a little string. He's gonna, he's gonna make a little, a little hair reliquary for it, right, out of imperishable crystal. Um, but there's some irony there. Okay, so the the idea is that the hair of Galadriel is what inspired Fanor to make the Silmarils in the first place. Uh, Galadriel's hair is like this really cool shimmery mixture of, of silver and gold, right? Um, so her hair looks very sort of shiny and luminous and really beautiful. So Fanor was really interested in her hair, um, but in a kind of like creepy, crazy uncle way. Uh, uh, so he's asking for her to like give him some of her hair. And she's like, no, uh, I don't like, you're not going to get my hair. So she refuses him and he goes and like makes the Silmarils. You know, and, uh, you know, and there we have the rest of the story. But so later on when Gimli said, you know, she asks Gimli to name his desire and he asks for her hair. And this is why all the other elves gasp. They're like, oh, oh man, like, you know, I can't believe he just did that. Um, because, you know, he doesn't know the story, right? Um, that she, that Feanor asked for her hair and she refused him and she gives it to him, right? Um, now, in part, this is because she's promised to give him what he wants, right? And she nobody expected him to ask for her hair. But what he says to do with his hair, there is this ironic fulfillment, right? Because he's going to take her hairs and he's going to put them uh, in imperishable crystal, uh, in other words, just like a, a, the Silmarils. Um, so he's, there's like a recapitulation of the Silmarils, except instead of being uh, an agent of division, which the Silmarils always were, right? This, this sort of associated with uh, possessive desire, first on Feanor's part and then on so many other people's parts. Uh, and that desire to possess the Silmarils creates so many uh, different uh, divisions and kinslayings and things like that. Um, but of course, this sort of second generation semi Silmaril, right, that Gimli is going to make with the hairs of Galadriel in it is instead a sign of, a sign of union, right? Uh, a, a, a beautiful thing, a beautiful relic like the Silmaril, but one that uh, represents the joining of two separated peoples and stuff. So it's, it's like a recapitulation of the Silmarils, but it's almost, also almost like a reversal of the Silmarils, uh, which is really awesome. So I just love that touch. It's one of those uh, really, really rich uh, background touches that we get. Um, and by the way, that's not in the Silmarillion, if you're looking for that. Uh, the story about Goadriel and her hair and Feanor is actually in the Book of Lost, uh, not the Book of Lost Tales. It's actually in Unfinished Tales uh, in the Goadriel and Celeborn section there. Uh, so in fact, the story about Goadriel and uh, not giving her hairs to Feanor uh, post dates the Lord of the Rings. Uh, so, although chronologically she has her issue with Feanor and her hair thousands of years before she gives her hair to Gimli, in the frame, in the authorial frame, um, the incident with Gimli is the one that comes first. And his uh, uh, retconning of the Silmaril thing comes afterwards, which is fun. Um, but uh, anyway, cool. Uh, all right, so let's, uh... oh, here we are. Hey, Noriel, so, right, yeah, I tried, oh, first I did get rid of the traps. What do you need? Yeah, no problems there. And they were all empty anyway, so, you know, no harm done, but. May give on in. Um, yeah, you would not have them abandon their lost fellow. Right, well, we'll, we'll help them. Bid the huntsmen stay and wait. We could tell them to stay put. All right, I'll tell them to stay put. We can do that. I'm carrying messages. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, okay, where did the... Uh, uh, Gondorzilla says, where did the dragons originate from? Uh, where... So were they not more powerful? Sorry, I'm not. I'm not parsing the syntax here. Um, uh, 
Where are they more powerful? Anyway, look for the first question anyway, which is queer, is where did they originate from? Okay. Uh, the, uh, Melkor's research and development office. Um, he had a very active R&D department, and they produced many different things, one of which was the dragons. Um, so Glaurung is the prototype dragon. He's the first, the father of, of the dragons. Where did he come from? Um, he seems to be a sort of a beast who is sort of twisted and corrupted and like grown out of uh, proportion, like Karkaroth, the gigantic wolf, right? Um, except he then has, I think, an evil spirit, like a, a one of the Maiar kind of, uh, uh, you know, welded into him, you know, sort of infused into him, trapped, really, within him. I think that is what we're led to believe about dragons. Um, like werewolves, essentially. You know, this sort of combining, to, this sort of forcible combining together of the body of a beast with the, uh, an ancient, a spirit of ancient evil. Um, and I think that's what Glaurung was. But then he's the father of dragons, so he is apparently able to breed them. Uh, and uh, uh, and Melkor goes on breeding them. So you've got uh, the the blue, the brood of Glaurung uh, emerges later on. Glaurung is the there's only one dragon at first in the Silmarillion, Glaurung. But then later on we do get his offspring eventually grow up. They take a while to grow up, um, but we see them of course most prominently coming out for the destruction of Gondolin near the end of the first stage, and they're very active in the final battle in the War of Wrath. Now, uh, and there of course we get. The, ne- the second stroke, he's been he's been upgrading them, right? So we get Dragon 2.0, which is the Winged Dragons, and the Winged Dragons are devastating, uh, and they are the uh, the most powerful of all the dragons. Glaurung had no wings. Originally, the first model of dragons were not winged, but then he, uh, he Melkor, developed the Winged Dragons. Almost all of the dragons, of all kinds, were destroyed in the War of Wrath, but... Unfortunately, a pair escaped, and so they continued to breed, and they escaped into the northern part of Middle-earth, which was around where Melkor's home base was, anyway, before. And they, um, so they, they remain and live on. That is why dragons still come down from the north. That's where Smaug came from. So Smaug is a descendant of the, uh, uh, the, the, the dragons that sort of survived there in the north, and we get stories of them still filtering through. This is where Scott of the Worm came from, uh, uh, who was killed by, uh, what's his name? Graham? Um, uh, Fram. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Fram, I think. Yeah. Right? Am I misremembering that? Anyway. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, dragons were the most powerful of all beings. Well, no, no, they're not. Uh, but they're pretty close. Um, it depends on the category, right? Um, so, if we think of like the different categories of creature, right? You have some creatures which are primarily spiritual beings who can manifest themselves in physical form, right? Um, like Balrogs. That's what Balrogs are, for instance. Um, they're bad news, right? They're much bigger bad news than any other kind of creature. Then you've got uh, the now the incarnate races, right? humans and elves, right? children of Luvatar, dwarves, um, uh, and all of the other variants and derivatives, such as orcs and hobbits. Um, you've, you've got all them, right? Uh, and then you have the sort of monstrosities that are bred by... Um, the monstrosities that are bred by Morgoth, uh, such as the dragons, for instance, and the werewolves, uh, and the, uh, unless Thurin Gwethel is the only one, the giant bats as well, vampires, um, so which, which means vampire bat. Um, and then, of course, there are the other good guys who are in that weird category, like eagles and ints, right, um, uh, who are also kind of like dwarves, sort of accepted as sort of stepchildren of Iluvatar, the implication is... Um, anyway, um, so, yeah, so in thinking about those things, when, therefore, uh, Gondorzilla, um, thinking about, are dragons the most powerful of creatures, right? 
they can't compare it to the creatures in category one, right? They can't compare it to like the Valar manifest or even great, you know, uh, great and powerful among the Maiar manifest, right? Like the Balrogs, for instance. Balrogs are much more powerful than dragons. But compared to other things, yeah, yeah, dragons are dragons are pretty much top of the food chain. Um, Karkaroth the Great Wolf is really the only creature who is sort of talked about in the category of like, I mean, outside of dragons, uh, in in the category of like you know greatest of all the uh, the you know hideous creatures of of Melkor. But honestly, I suspect you know Glaurung is worse than Karkaroth. I think. Um, you know, if you, you want to do a who would win book between Karkaroth and, and Glaurung, I'm going with Glaurung there. And I think that, um, you know, like Ankalagon the Black might be even greater, briefly, uh, than Glaurung. So, um, so yeah, no, the dragons are the dragons are big, right? They're very important. But, um, anyway, okay. All right. So, Winmar, I'm talking to you. Will you aid the Horse Lords? Uh, the elves wish to help them. On the condition they will not wander from their camp. Okay. Our success depends upon uh, our strength. Will you aid us? You will leave if we find him. Okay. All right. Sure. Happy to help a missing intruder. That's a good. That's a good title. Um. Well. Okay. So. Uh. Uh, Nitesh, I, I, and Kalgan the Black, whose fall br broke Thangaradrim. Yes, his size and evident power suggest even Balrogs might not stack up to him. Yeah, well, oops, I'm about to cross the boundary again. Um, it's it's sizes and everything uh, <laughs> would be my answer to that. Um, that is. As is the case with yikes. Okay, let's uh, let's go. Let's get burglarious here. Um, excuse me, looking for a. Hi, have you guys, any of you, seen a Rohiric hunter who's somewhere around here? I'm 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 looking. Oh, here's some disturbed earth. Okay, that's good. Um, and Kalgan the Black was very large, no question. Um, uh, oh, what? Noriel just... What I can just, I do to you? Teleported. Wow. Okay, let's go. No point in me stealthing myself, because you're going to attack everybody we see, so... All right, let's go around this way. Um, and Kalgan on the Black is huge, uh, but the Balrogs, like the Ringwraiths, it's not, you know, they're not about brawn. Um, it's much more than that. The, the, the fearful presence of the Balrogs, just like standing up and fighting the Balrogs, is what makes them a big deal. It's really easy to sort of physicalize things. Especially, I would say, when you're used to thinking in video game terms, right? I mean, this is something that's come up a lot lately in my Exploring the Lord of the Rings class when we've been talking about um, uh, the Ring Wraiths, right? And, you know, you want to think, well, the, you know, the Ring Wraiths are their How can I be upset? bosses, right? So they're going to be huge. They're going to they're gonna do lots and lots of damage. They're going to have enormous amounts of health points. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, like their morale points will be enormous. Um but that's not how it works in Tolkien's world. Um, it's not even obvious that the the Ringwraiths fight usually with weapons. Um, the Morgul blade that they use to stab Frodo has another has a specific purpose, right? It's part of a, part of their spiritual assault. Um, it's not. It's a. They're about spiritual assault rather than physical assault. So it's not a question of do you stack up against them? Can you beat them up? Um, or, you know, are they going to beat you up? Same with Balrogs. It's not about... It's not about how big they are, certainly. It's not... Because he's not that big, actually, the Balrog, um, in the book. But he's... Um, um, 
Uh, he's... Oh. Nowhere else but... Oh, okay, you got this. Let's see. Sorry. Uh, the arrows hit their mark. The hoofprints go off in one direction. The footprints another. Uh-oh. It looked like he was wounded. You got this, uh, Norio? Need some help? Sorry, that guy wandered in while I was talking about stuff. That uh, so often happens. Okay, we're good. So we're going... Sorry. Oh, oh there, there's his bow. All right, hang on. Oh, he's dropped his bow. That can't be good. Oh, is there a pool of his own blood? Oh, I see him up there, but I guess we have to, we have to go here too. Oh dear, he might be dead. Oh, oh, hang on. I have to talk to you. He's right over there. What do you need? Someone was shooting at him. Uh oh. Yeah, this doesn't look good. Pierced by many arrows. Oh dear. What can I do for you? Okay. You would investigate further? What is our, like, orc arrows not his cause of death? The enemies who slew this fellow may yet be near. Will driving out the unwelcome road here and still be the first priority when a true enemy is surely so near? Well, yeah, we just saw a whole mess of them. Make a case to chase out the true enemy, not the Rohirrim. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, is this... Am I supposed to start an instance? I guess I should off this guy first. You are no match for Griffith. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay, that's great. Anyway, so, um... It has been many long years since the men of Rohan saying, yeah, the, established the, 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 the keep of Starnguard really upon the borders of Lorien. The neighboring on. elves, suspicious of all, right. have never yet let themselves be seen by the Rohirrim. Is Halberd still narrating? That's interesting. Meg of Arnon. Okay. Uh, all right, great job, Noriel. We're gonna, hang on. All right, I'm readying myself. Huh. Why are these guys... Oh, he's an invalid target, that's why he's yellow? I'm just meant to fight this one guy while you're fighting the other two? I can take him, right? I could take the lot of them. comes. I'll sneak behind this tree and I will aggressively pick his pocket. Oh man, failed to burgle anything. That is so lame. Is there a third wave, Norio, I'm guessing? Where did they come from? Oh, here comes a bunch of people. Let's see how many. Ooh, six orcs, huh? Let's still sneak up behind him. And let's see. Ooh, I got more consumables. I am so uncomfortable when I pick the pockets of orcs and get, like, healing potions and things. It just seems... Deeply wrong for some reason. Okay. Um. Nice. Oh, you finished them up. Oh, I see. Ah, the confrontation. Hi, Winmar. So this is one of the elves. As you see, she's not really a spirit. She was helping. What business have you with the Rohirrim? You were just in time to save us. 
Introduce me to this brave lady. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, she is kind of cute, right? Oh, she just bowed to you. Now that we meet, know that you trespass upon Elflands. Their presence was only a rumor? Okay. Um, you must insist that they leave. Okay, right, right, yeah, his corpse is right over there. My folk will leave your forest. You have my word. Oh, this puts you in a very tragical position, Winmar. He has given his word. Oh, he might come to regret that. What can I do for you? Look to ensure that Winmar keeps his word. Okay. All right. I'll go with him. Okay. Oh, man. This can't end well. Where are we? Here we are. Back at their camp? Yes, we are. Hey, Winmar. So don't get any, you know, funny ideas. I mean, she's cute and everything, but... What brings you to these lands? I am a stout warrior. Well, that's nice of you to say. I mean, not really, but, uh... I mean, I guess it depends on how you mean that, right? Oh, let's see. Hmm. Gosh. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's fine, Winmar. The Rohirrim will need your aid. I know Noriel did not wish us to wander Thinglad, but surely you saw the tracks of orcs, right? Yeah, I'm free to. So you want me to kill orcs on your behalf? Our success depends upon our strength. You don't want me will to you like aid us take the heads of the orcs to Noriel as a love token, do you? Because that'd be awkward. I really don't want to get in the middle of this, Winmar. Our weapons are now scattered through the wood after the skirmish. Did you see her when she fought? Oh, her deft blade work. The way her hair shone like gold. Oh, dear Winmar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gather the weapons. Okay. Oh, dear. The Rohirrim will need your The raid. lovely lady I saw you with. No, I, it sounded like you can't stop thinking about her. You want me to pick her flowers? Really? Oh, because you don't want to wander out. I see. Okay. Oh. Uh huh. Oh, so you want me to pick flowers for you so that you can take the flowers back? So the forbidden flowers of near Lorien will remind you of. Okay. Ooh, hey, a statue. Who is this? Hi, old heart. Don't attack me. I don't mean you any harm. Just want to look at the statue. Hang on. Is it? Is that Galadriel? Who is the one I'm forgetting now? Who's looking into her own hand like that? Is that Nimrodel? Is this. I don't remember what the Nimrodel statue looked like, the one by the phone. Is this. Is this Nimrodel? The one who's up by, I think it is the Nimrodel statue. A copy of the one that was up near near the near the falls of Nimrodel, right? I think that must be it. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, how to pick flowers without angering the deer. Darn it. Man, I did not want to fight you. I have no quarrel with you, good Sir Deer.
Okay, we're collecting... Boy, he wants a lot of flowers. It is Nimmerdell. Okay. Okay, good. That's what I thought. Glad I'm remembering my elf statues. Okay, let's see. So, where are we? Okay, I'm going this way. We're looking for flowers. We're killing orcs. And we're looking for weapons on the ground. Okay. Fine. Um, all right. Let me get another lore question. Got lots of gathering, to hunting and gathering here. Okay. Oh, uh, so uh, Shmatsio is saying, uh, do I think the biggest of all for Oliphants in the poem isn't literal? Uh, like, you know, so was Ankalagon the Black uh, bigger? Uh, yeah, I suspect he was bigger. Um, no, that, um, that line in the Oliphant poem, well, let's be perfectly blunt, none of that Oliphant poem really sounds sort of especially scientific, right? Um, so I don't think, you know, biggest of all, huge, bold, and tall, like, I think... You know, the Oliphant can still qualify as... Oh, man, that guy didn't even count? All right. Um, uh, you know, he could, calling him, you know, biggest of all, it's kind of... Uh, what is that legal phrase? Oh, yeah, mere puffery. Mere puffery. Uh, that line is mere puffery. Uh, it's not meant to be a quantitatively verifiable claim, I think. Um, uh, mere puffery is a fun legal phrase. It's it's an actual legal phrase. Uh, it is uh, so if if someone makes a, a claim, uh, you know, like if somebody says like uh, we we have the best pizza in the world, you can't like sue them on the premise that their pizza there is in fact other pizza in the world that is indeed better than theirs. Their statement is not designed to be you know, sort of scientifically verifiable. It's not a, it's not a, 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 a sort of a quantitative claim. It is mere puffery. Um, and uh, so I take that line, uh, biggest of all, uh, to be mere puffery, just like huge, uh, old and tall, you know, like, okay, yeah, like he's huge too. It doesn't, uh, not making a really specific claim. Okay. Oh. Man. Sorry, Orc Warrior. I just wanted to not fight the deer, too, because why should I fight the deer at all, really? I keep telling the deer of this forest that I have no quarrel with them any more than I have a quarrel with the bears. I'm just wanting to pick flowers, right? I mean, how much more peaceable can I get? Did that orc count? No. Okay. All right, we've got the spears. Do I have all the weapons? Yes. Okay, but man, I still need four flowers. There was a flower over there with that deer, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Look, he's chasing me, this deer. Get over yourself, man. I am trying to pass the buck, Melindrin. Okay, so, um... Let me see. Uh, where was I? Sorry, I lost my list here. Okay. Um, other questions, other questions. Um... Ah, Marielle. Uh, always. Such a fine source of lore questions is Marielle. Uh, normally in fiction or film, when a mad villain refers to his or her abominations as my children, such as uh, example she cites is uh, Davros uh, of, the, of the Daleks, uh, there's a certain amount of pride in their creations. Does Saruman ever express pride in his uruk -hai, or is his view of them fully functional? Um... Great question, and I think really the answer is that we don't 
Sorry, I seem to be incapable of approaching this flower. Uh, we don't really know. Um, we don't actually hear him uh, talking about them, though, you know, one of the things that you can't help but notice, right, is that we hear the Urukai talking about them, bragging about themselves all the time, right? Um, you got to think that someone has really beat it into their heads that they are the best and the greatest, right? So, you know, one wouldn't be surprised, at least I wouldn't be surprised, if that person uh, was in, were in fact to be, um, to be Saruman himself. Um, that is an element that got added to the film, right? That whole scene, which, you know, admittedly was, does he count? No, he doesn't count either. I'm going to get out of these non-counting orcs. Not orcs that don't, are incapable of counting. I'm talking about enumerate orcs. Uh, uh, I'm just talking about orcs which don't count towards my tally here. Where are his... Oh, there it is, the orc camp. Okay. Oh, who's this? The ground is on fire. Hey, a flower! And an orc. This is the guy I'm looking... Yes! Okay. Picking pocket. And, nah, failure. Okay, anyway. Um, so what were they talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, in the films, we do get that speech from Saruman. <laughs> Why was I frozen there? Why am I not doing anything? What's wrong with me? <laughs> I keep pushing skills and they just keep not happening. That was weird. Um... I think it was lagging, maybe? I don't know. Um, but, um, yeah, so we do get that speech, which is so confusing to so many people, um, where he's sort of explaining to them about the, uh, the origin of orcs. And um, I really like the way that, they, that uh, Peter Jackson did that scene um, in the original Fellowship of the Ring film, because... It really shows not exactly pride in them as if they really were his children or something like that. Um, but what it does is it shows, you know, that the, the line, the best line uh, is the, you know, and now perfect it, right? And there you can see what I think is something which is really close to the heart um, of Saruman. Um, and that is his measuring him, his desire to measure himself up against you know the great heroes of old he wants to be considered among one of the great ones even if in the end he's going to be one of the bad guys right he still wants to he he considers himself Sauron's rival not his servant right he wants to increase his reputation he wants people to respect him even if they fear him um and uh Again, that just that seems to me very important uh, in understanding Saruman's character. Uh, so that kind, from that angle, his expression of pride in the Urukai again, not really pride in them personally, but um, but rather simply pride in his own accomplishment. That he's he didn't invent orcs. You know, he, most of this stuff he didn't invent, but by golly, he's perfected it. Uh, and that's, that's pretty cool. Again, that strikes me as very sorrowful. Um, all right. A backpack. Okay, lots of stuff. Nice. Oh, sorry, I saw something shining and I couldn't see what it was, but of course it was just the backpack I had just gotten. Yeah, no, that's not a bear, that's a... That's a... It's not an orc, that's a bear? Uh, no? Is that a pig? Where? Well, 
Where'd they go? Oh, here we go. It's weird. They're just not on my quest map, which is interesting. Okay. Um. Cool. Right. Oh man, would you? I have no quarrel with the deer of Thinglad for crying out loud. You just fight off the stags of this place. All right, two more. Or three. Three is just as good, really. Okay. So I still have no idea what I'm doing in the yellow line, by the way. I'm pretty much just mashing buttons, and I don't still, I still really don't understand how tricks work. Gonna be totally honest with you about that. Uh, I'm just like hitting trick buttons and assuming that that's accomplishing something because yeah I really don't get it okay that's right Phil the Burgle Guardian that's Grifflet okay so where's the hmm Oh, they're just around the corner here. Okay, fine. All right. Oh, for a second I thought those were human heads, but no, they're horse heads. Wow, do they bring those really nice braziers and candle holders and like lamp stands with them? So like when they pack up, are they gonna leave? Are they gonna take those things with them? Do they load a horse just with lamps posts to bring with? Okay. Um, Our mission is yeah, dire. Yeah, found your weapons. Did I happen to see her? <laughs> oh man, you are completely Twitter pated here, Winmar. It's so cute. And what brings tragical. you to these lands? Um. I have done this last service to the fair wood of Thinglad ere my folk depart. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um. What brings you to these lands? They are nothing to her beauty, but they will serve as a reminder. Oh, yeah. Why don't you give them to her? Okay, you're gonna... Okay, I knew I was gonna end up delivering a bouquet. I just knew it. Will you aid the Rohirrim? You have stricken. You're stricken. Yeah, that's certainly true. It's looking bad. Uh, I've never seen a woman so fair or brave as Noriel, nor so cold. Ouch. Take me to their keep. Eee, that's a little dodgy, Winmar. Ah. Uh. Okay. Yeah, what could go wrong? All right. She's not going to stab him, is she? <laughs> Wunmar, struck by the beauty of Noriel, wishes to look upon the elf one last time before accepting his people's banishment from Thinglad by its elf sentinels. Hmm. Winmar, I know what you're thinking. You're probably standing here thinking, just like I am, that that's a really interesting shape for a gate in a fortification out here in the wild like this, right? Look at that stonework and the arches up above, right? Like these gothic arches, which seem to contain nothing. They're just purely decorative, meant to have, clearly meant to have open spaces in the middle. Right? And Winmar, you're probably also wondering, why are there ruins? Like, why? Why are these ruined? I mean, these are elves. 
right? I mean, it's not like they don't live here anymore. This is untidy. Look at the lichen all over these walls and like the vines and things. Don't they ever clean house? How is it that I came in here and was not looking around? Boy, Grifflet is out of practice. Um, yeah, look, the vaults are broken. Did this have a ceiling? Does it not anymore? Look at those broken columns. When did they break? Why did they break? Why did they not get fixed? See, when we were looking at elf ruins up in Mil uh, M M M L Luinen, where the swampy place up in the North Downs with the elves in it, you know, where Gildor and Glorian is hanging out. There it makes sense, right? That was clearly a, um, a Noldor ruin from olden days, right? Very, very olden days. Um, and they haven't lived there, you know, for a long time. So fine, you know, I, I get that. But what's the excuse here? The elves of Lorien have been here for a very long time. Is this their structure? I would assume so. They're still hanging out here, so why is it a ruin? I don't know, man. But anyway, you probably want me to talk to you. Where did you go? Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I am. I'm exploring. Sorry. Winmar, I, I'm leaving you hanging here. That's just not kind. I love how the horse is still there, even the stable master is not there. A backpack stand? Whose backpack stand is this? This looks like a little a little Wilson's leather outlet or something. Who's selling things? Is that a vault keeper? You know, portable version? Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, Winmar, I apologize. I got carried away. You're probably not wondering about the architectural features of the What ruins. business have you with the Rohirrim? Hollyrith at all, are you? Hidden Dwimmerdeen ruins. Sure. Yeah. You've walked this spot, uh, by this spot a score of times and never saw the place? Well, I can understand that. I walked right into these ruins and wasn't really looking at it either, so. Um, what sorcery conceals the lovely Noriel and her folk from our eyes, oh dear. Yeah, uh... Okay, perhaps it is the magic of Dwimmer Dean that makes Noriel so fair and her sword skill so sharp. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's her fault, man. I think you're kind of obsessed and it's a little bit cute, but... How did she bewitch you? Yeah, how? Oh, here we go. Hold, trespasser. Wait, who's that? Nino? You have been warned. Um, yeah, so first of all, is this really a keep, per se? Because if it is, you've kept it in very ill repair, I have to tell you. I mean, there aren't even any gates here, so it's not like this place is even defensible, as is. Nino? Servants of the enemy cannot pass the bounds of Lorien. Yeah, but they're not servants of the enemy. Winmar is a good guy, right? He's, uh, uh, yeah, where is Noriel? Let's sort this out. I'm here to, you know, set up a, oh, oh dear. If we've, but then you must go. Wait, who, Norio must go? We're O patrolling. Right. Okay, sure. Hey, Norio. Megavonen. You don't think I was right to bring him? Not even if he's crushing on you really hard? What do you have to say about this, Norio? Oh, Winmar, you sweet talker, you apologizing. Tell her why you asked to be brought here, Winmar. 
You've yearned to meet her again. Yeah, lay it on the line, Winmar. What do you have to lose? Can't stop thinking about her. Horse rider. Yeah, that's... Please, please don't stop. Ah, oh, I am called Winmar. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good line, Winmar. Horse rider, trespasser, whatever you are called. Ouch. Oh, now she's walking away. You must leave immediately. Ouch. Yeah, I think I'm in love with you. Okay, little direct there, Winmar. Could have been done a little bit more flowery, but that's okay. Oh, you don't know what to do. No woman has ever struck my heart so. Uh-huh. Okay, that's, that's getting better. Your people are the enemies of mine. No, they're not. No, they don't call you Dwimmer Dean. Uh, I don't know what madness. Like, oh, dear, leave this place. No, he's mad with love. No, she doesn't speak true. You're not enemies. She can get over it, too. Who has the problem now, huh? Oh, man, Winmar. Wow, Norio, you handled that really badly. I mean, look, I get it. He's mortal. You know, he's a little scruffy. Maybe he smells bad, but you did not handle How can that I well. be of service? Bah? Seriously? Losing sympathy for Noriel. Yes, I think you were too hard on him. That was terrible. Under no circumstances would an elf of this age choose to love a mortal man. Yeah, I know, right? That would be crazy. Crazy. Who would do that? Only an idiot. Man. Oh, that was harsh. Harsh, Norio. Wait, that's it? Oh, where's Nino? Yeah, I'm going to go to your boss. Oh, no, this is Nino. Hi, are you the boss here? Is that why you're doing... What are you doing? Oh, you're reading. What business have you with the Lord and Lady? Was most smitten. Yes, he was. It is unfortunate that she has no interest in such attentions. Well, yes. I know his intentions were good, but I think you should not have brought him here. Well, maybe not. I wouldn't have if I'd known Nor Norio was going to be such a jerk. Uh, yeah, man, that's just sad. Gloves of forbidden love. I kind of want to keep those just for the name. Winmar's Last Wish. Gauntlets of the Hidden Paths. Oh. The Hidden Paths of Love. All right. That's it? I don't get to go back to Winmar? Hey there, Limb Fiend. Limb Fiend. Huh. A shadow falls beyond the has gone off to the woods against once which again we to must investigate be more signs. She would like you to do the same by helping our scout. Renfire to the south. Okay. Well, fine. Let's hope none of the animals fall in love with anybody. I'm totally on Winmar's side. That was terrible. Let's hope we meet poor love-stricken Winmar again. Okay. All right. Yes, looks like Griffin is out of time. We should stop here. Having just finished the Thinglad quests, now seems like a good time to start. And Thinglad Sentinel, who doesn't maintain the gates of this place, or the walls, or the towers, or really any of the things, and has let this thing run to rack and ruin over the last, you know, few millennia. Anyway, all right. But we'll stop there. Uh, and then we'll continue to move south into the Great River next time. So I will be here next week. In fact, I should be here for the next several weeks in a row now. Uh, well, okay, let me not be hasty. I'll definitely be here next week. And I think the week after that. No, I think 
Maybe not the week after that. Anyway, one week at a time. I'll be here next week. How about that? Uh, thanks for joining me, everybody. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week as uh, Grifflet now carries on his momentum down into the Great River. Thanks for all of your excellent lore questions uh, and fun discussions here today. And I will see you guys next week. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.